UBC Inspiring Uganda It is episode 23, season 11 of the weekly business roundup. Welcome, my name is Wadulo Mark Arnold and we're glad you're watching UBC TV. Straight to the highlights. The Parliamentary Committee of Environment and Natural Resources visits solar power water sites in Western Uganda. EcoBank Uganda has launched a premier banking service. Uganda Airlines prospecting a new aircraft. And we also talk bank loans in our exclusive interview. For all this and more, don't touch the dial, it's time for business. Uganda Airlines will take delivery of an Airbus A320neo aircraft next month through an SCMI wet lease arrangement. Adding this aircraft to the airline's fleet will bridge the gap between the existing four CRJ900s and the two Airbus A330-800neos. UBC Samuel Senono reports. The national carrier Uganda Airlines is expected to take delivery of an Airbus A320 Neo aircraft, a workhorse for airlines worldwide. This single aisle jetliner isn't just popular, it is actively sought after by airlines looking to modernize and expand their fleet. Globally, there is a strong demand for new passenger aircraft, particularly in the single aisle segment. The timelines for production, the timelines for aircraft availability keep moving further and further if you don't make your orders. We haven't made an order yet. The nearest we can get is 2029-2030. For Uganda Airlines, which is operating a fleet of six, including four Mitsubishi Sierra J900s and two wide-body A330-800 NEOs, the need for a mid-range aircraft is long overdue. According to the airline CEO Jennifer Muturaki, the airline is considering a wait list option of aircraft crew maintenance and insurance. We'll have that aircraft here. It will be an A320 NEO, um, but it will have, the company comes with its crew, that's why it's called SEMI. It will have their crew, insurance paid for, and maintenance. And hopefully, I believe, it will bridge the gap. So we're going to put this aircraft on certain routes where we were using the CRJ and having volume and weight challenges. We hope to see an increase and improvement in our numbers, especially on those routes like Johannesburg, where we were restricting the baggage weight and number of uh, bags you can carry. She also highlighted that they have received numerous foreign operator permits to kickstart commercial operations to other destinations. We received for Jeddah Riyadh, We've received four, Lusaka Harare, and we are waiting on um, Guangzhou. We're looking forward, first and foremost, to the fact that we can expand our route network, but also we're looking forward to the fact that we will be creating the hub concept in Entebbe, where we bring people through to connect on other flights or to come into Uganda to enjoy our tourism. Bamdraki said these are the sidelines of Raniftar dinner organized by the airline for the Muslim community in Kampala. The event was graced by Abbas Sechaz Murubia, the Secretary General of the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, among others. The Parliamentary Committee of Environment and Natural Resources, chaired by West Budama South MP Emmanuel Otala, had a three-day oversight visit of the solar-powered water supply and irrigation project sites in central and western Uganda. Now, this project is owned by the Ministry of Water and Environment and financed by the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. 
This parliamentary oversight visit is the second follow-up of the solar-powered water supply and irrigation project to the one that occurred early in 2023, eastern and northern Uganda. This time, the signs in the central and western region of the country show tremendous progress in the infrastructure setup and utilization. Most of us know that uh, this area falls under Masaka Ankore Dry Corridor. So the area is always dry. We, have, we receive rains just for a short period of time. Sonko, a passion fruit and tomato grower in Lutente, earns about 15 million shillings on tomatoes alone in a week, but used to spend 35% of that to run the farm. Each solar system costs an average of between 600 million and 750 million shillings to set up. So it's not only this amount of money. It may be a billion at the end of the day. Or it may be 1.5 at the end of the day. How does it have an impact? Do we have to have to go for these mini ones that are small or something that covers the whole village? So the rationale is a solar-powered pump station like this one behind me, built by Nexus Green, should supply a group of farmers. For example, the farm that this particular one is serving is about 12 acres wide. That is still small. If you imagine 94,000 square miles that constitute Uganda's land, you still find that it will take us a long time to reach out to many people and make them benefit from this project. Government through the Ministry of Water and Environment contracted Nexus Green an international solar company operating in Uganda to develop 687 of such sites across the country. These are supposed to be pilot systems, for lack of a better word. Uh, that's why the scope is a little bit smaller. If you're irrigation, it's about uh, five hectares uh, per scheme. But they are supposed to be model uh, uh, irrigation systems. And this uh, one is to, of course, demonstrate that with increased coverage, with increased irrigation, according to the president's vision, you can actually quadruple your production. Currently, 161 sites are still under construction, 367 are at design stage, 351 sites have failed at different stages of design due to poor quality or inadequate water. 50 sites are completed and undergoing commissioning, but still face potential risks. Land ownership being a potential risk to this project because these people are saying they are Bibanja holders. And being a Chibanja holder sometimes ends with a, a casual relationship with the landlord. But you need to secure your tenancy by having proper document and your Chibanja surveyed. The sites visited by this committee include Lutente Irrigation Scheme in Kalungu East, Mpumude Irrigation Scheme in Chazanga, Bugo Irrigation Scheme and Mitiebili Irrigation Scheme in Chotera, Chamuhanga Water Supply System in Bushenyi, and Orutoma Irrigation Scheme in Chiruhura District. Wadulo Makanol for UBC Business in Western Uganda. Banks are usually the go-to for liquidity when an individual, group, or institution wants to accomplish a specific target. In our exclusive interview, we talk with Kinyera Christopher, the head of personal banking and wealth management at DFCU, who shares insights into their loan campaign and loan products in general. Hello and welcome to another exclusive interview on the weekly business roundup. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold and today we have a topic for you, which is bank loans. Many of you acquire loans from financial institutions, uh, seeking to complement your business's capital or your school going endeavors. Whatever the case, you need a loan at some point in your life. So I'm joined by a gentleman. I'll allow him to introduce himself, his name and what he does. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us here. Quite excited to have you. Greeting to our esteemed customers. 
My name is Kinyera Christopher Allen. I head personal banking at Wealth Management. So, Mr. Mr. Kinyera, I would like to know, uh, you are launching the DFCU Guamobi into campaign, which is a salary loan campaign running for about, what, 16 weeks? Uh, would you enlighten us more about what this campaign is about? Thank you, Mark. Uh, this is DFCU has launching a 16-week campaign, which we call uh, Guamobi Into. Uh, it's offering to customers segment. Uh, we look at the salary segment. And purely we are giving special offers to our existing customers to help them solve their financial needs. Okay. Yes, yes. So when you, see, when you say salaried customers, are you talking about customers that are already with you or even a new customer could come in if they were inter interested in this particular product? Quite exciting. Thank you so much. Uh, the campaign look at uh, those who have salary with us. The seller has been coming through our bank's account for the last three months. And what we expect from you, you need to have a valid contract, you need to have a payslip, and you get undertaking from your employer, and that's sufficient enough for you to borrow it. But at the same time, we are also quite uh, welcoming to the new customer to come in. You can open a new account and still you become part of the, 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 the clientele base to borrow to. So I remember the time I took a loan a few years back. I was embraced by this bank and I was new. I didn't even take three months with that bank, but they helped me process my salary. I mean, my salary loan as fast as possible, as quick as in a record time of about, I think, two days. I would like to know, how about you? What do you promise on your end if, you, if a person wanted a loan? As DFCU, we have really streamlined our processes mm. and we make our loan real time. We commit that we can deliver loan into your account mm. within 48 hours. 48 hours, those are two days. Two days, you should have money in your account. Okay. Yes. But that's quite a record time. Um, do you do background search on these people? Because if I had three or four loan products, I was running with other financial institutions, would that bar me from benefiting from Guamobi into? No, because we, we give room for, for borrowing. We have what we call the debt income ratio, which determines how much someone qualifies for. Remember, these individuals are employees who are being recommended by their employers and they give detailed financial uh, capacity of those individual uh, employees. Mm. So, we, we believe that we are able to offer you the solution, the needs, basing on the, uh, the net payment which you have and the balance of the debt income ratio you have from your salary, the net pay. Okay. Yes. And then I would also like to know um, what kind of target customers are you looking at? Because different people are earning different scales of salaries. Uh, we are also looking at the Montua one, see who has a salary of 50,000 or okay, 50,000, maybe too little, maybe 200,000 shillings per month. Would you re recommend that as a potential borrower for the Guamobi in two? And maybe also how high can this salary loan go? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Quite exciting. We have two approaches. One, we have what we call the scheme, uh, whereby the employee, we add them in the scheme. So the scheme is scheme of a different uh, value proposition also. But uh, what is also important for us is uh, any, empl any employee who earned a net pay of 200,000 qualify for the loans mm -hmm. and the maximum amount for unsecured we can give you is up to 200 and 250 million unsecured. And you're, you're talking about unsecured, meaning that you don't have to come with uh, security. This is uh, being secured by your salary or your contract, per se. Exactly. So when you talk of unsecured, it means it's only supported by the, the cash flow which comes from your salary. Mm. So it is up to 250. And we are also glad to inform our esteem customers that we, we offer up to 84 months, that is seven years, uh, a spread of seven years, to give people uh, a, a balance of money for them to live with. Okay. Yes. Being a business reporter, I sense that uh, quite a number of financial institutions are offering 
salary loans. They've been doing it for quite a while, but it seems that um, today it's not only just the salary loan, I would say, but there seems to be available capital, something that so many Ugandan businessmen or people have been grappling with. But at this time, there is capital and financial institutions are giving it out. But from the perspective of loans, could you provide insights into the long-term impact of salary loans on the financial well-being of customers? Yeah, thank you. Uh, if we look at borrowing as general, okay, borrowing is to strengthen the investment uh, plan of individual, and mostly individual who come to borrow has already goal uh, set ready for them to achieve. And you see this campaign we have put at the beginning of the year with the intent to achieve individual annual plan. You have planned yourself what you want to achieve for this year. So we finance your dreams. And in the process, we are transforming lives of people. Mm -hmm. So borrowing is what we do more is first we train people. We do financial literacy to a group of people. We train them how to utilize the fund, how do you fulfill your dreams using the money you borrowed. Mm -hmm. So a sufficient and really a disciplined borrowing is good for personal growth and individual development. Okay. So as DFCU, how do you protect consumers against bad debt? For example, if I had loans that are already choking, on me, choking me down and I'm not able to you know, do you still advise me correctly or would you still give me a loan? <laughs> yeah, that is why if you pick from my first statement, I clearly put that we have what we call the debt income ratio. And that's a control mechanism which protects an individual from going outside the range. Mm -hmm. Because despite the fact that you are borrowing, mm -hmm. you need to have ability to leave. Mm -hmm. So the borrowing and leaving need to work together. But also the purpose of the loan should be well articulated and defined. So always we ensure that when someone is borrowing, we guide on the purpose of the loan. What do you want to achieve out of that? Okay. It's part of sustainable uh, way of financing. Okay. How about when it comes to the interest rate? Are you offering us the, the best rate on the market? Or would you mind sharing, us, sharing with us what interest rates customers will be able to borrow at? I believe uh, if we look at the interest rate in the market, uh, particularly in this economy, uh, there are so many variables which are put in when you are putting at the interest. When I look at the interest of uh, while you are lending to the customer. Mm -hmm. But for our specifically, our lending we have put up to 17.5%, uh, and that's the rate we are giving in the market. And I, I would like to know, 17%, um, I've seen banks that give at 15, 16, and 17. Is this determined by one of the reasons? Is it determined by central bank CBR? Or what usually brings your rate to what you... Can I negotiate downwards? In other words, that's what I'm asking. Okay, you know, when we are looking at uh, pricing in the banking industry, and that is what uh, outside is called interest rate, there are like four key components of variables we look at. Mm. One of them is what we call credit risk. Mm. What is the risk in the market? Number two, we look at uh, what is the inflation. Uh, three, we look at also uh, what, is, uh, what is the central bank lending rate. Okay? Mm. What is the cost of funds? Okay? All those amalgamated, it gives it give us a clue of the industry rates. And that is how bank modernize. Uh, they, they come clearly with what rate they can offer in the market. All right. Well, uh, coming from me, as I sign out, I have also been told, I've managed to meet a number of uh, wealthy people. And the person told me it's hard to find a wealthy person without a debt on them. And that's because they go through the process of borrowing money and investing money, borrowing money and investing money. So you might have a good idea, but when you, if you don't have the capital to run the idea, then you're very likely going to be stuck. So take advantage of these products that come out here and uh, make sure that you can, you know, pay them sustainably and make sure you develop yourself other, other than, you know, misusing the money and you're in a trap. Otherwise, thank you for joining us for this exclusive interview of the weekly business roundup. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold and catch you on the next one. Thank you. EcoBank Uganda has launched a premier banking service, a top-range product and elite offering designed to cater for the modern customer's unique needs. According to Grace Mulisa, 
the managing director of EcoBank, the premier banking proposition is designed to revolutionize family businesses and lifestyles. Uganda's banking industry has grown greatly over the last two decades. However, with the recent announcement of the country being elevated to the lower middle income status, the industry players have more expectation. Grace Molisa, the managing director, EcoBank Uganda, made this revelation. I think as a country, we've just been upgraded into uh, lower middle income uh, status, and that's really big uh, for us. It simply means that today, so many Ugandans actually require support when it comes to financial matters. And that's where they are in terms of stage of life. That we will advise them when it comes to financial matters, that we will educate them, and we will walk that journey beyond this stage of their lifestyle to the next stage and the next stage. To keep up with elite customer preferences and the changing banking trends, EcoBank Uganda has launched a premier banking service. The new product represents the Pan-African Bank's commitment to excellence, offering a banking experience tailored to the unique needs of the clients. We are doing this so that we can be able to give an opportunity for our customers to be able to use their time uh, to do other things that are of value to them and also to trust us uh, with a way that we can make their lives uh, in, a, in a better way. EcoBank Uganda being part of the bank uh, group of EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank, as our customers, we commit to you that we are going to work with you uh, in this relationship across all our markets and you are able to receive this premier banking service across any of our markets at any time. At the event, graced by the director's supervision at the central bank, Tumuwene Twinamanzi, EcoBank unveiled the Visa Infinite card, a seamlessly integrated card with the bank's offering. Visa Infinite is at the apex of the um, Visa card range with a host of benefits which include uh, lounge access, discount to hotels, um, concierge services, meet and assess, all these features that really befit the lifestyle of a premier banking client. Um, we also did launch our premier centre. We have refurbished our premier centre here today. As you can see, looking very, very beautiful. Uh, we're grateful to have the um, customers that came and joined us here today as well. Uh, those have been the key things. And when you look at it, it's really taking banking to another level for our customers. Okay, EcoBank is a Pan-African bank. We are in 35 African countries. Advanced security features, infinite card unlocks numerous benefits, such as exclusive discounts and cashback rewards, a proposition that goes beyond traditional financial services. Denis Igor for UBC Business. Whitewater rafting, a thrilling adventure activity synonymous with the River Nile, is now making waves in western Uganda near the renowned Bwindi Impenetrable National Park and Queen Elizabeth National Park, as Denis Sigwa reports. Three day. If you have three-day weekend, okay. you break up the trip on the way there. Sadat Kawawa, a seasoned whitewater kayaker and rafting guide, sheds light on this emerging trend challenging the traditional perception of rafting being exclusive to the River Nile in Uganda. And after some years of um, enjoying a lot on the Nile in different countries, uh, later I realized that um, in Uganda we have uh, more than just having um, the Nile rafting. Um, so after um, a couple of trials of um, checking out uh, different rivers uh, around the country, mm -hmm. uh, I got found a uh, uh, river Virara in uh, southwest of Uganda, uh, in between uh, Rukunjiri and Kanungu. Okay. Uh, that's where you find a uh, river Virara. Some people call it Nengo, some people call it Mitano. And uh, when I found this river, I was like, yes, this is uh, such an amazing place uh, to share with uh, the rest of the world. And uh, we came up with the idea of uh, studying Sanagura rafting. And um, yeah, uh, it has been like a year ago now. Um, it's going good. And uh, right now I'm here to tell the rest of the world that uh, this is another piece of adventure in Uganda that um, for many years uh, we didn't know about it. And uh, it's there waiting for us. It runs all year round. Sana Rafting, pioneers of this new venture of an accelerating experience on River Birira nestled between Kanungu and Rukunjiri districts. This class 4 river boasts continuous rapids, promising adventure enthusiasts a thrilling blend of excitement and adrenaline. 
Sadat Kawawa emphasizes the significance of the gorilla rafting experience in captivating well, both local not, um, and international the tourists. The it's a very safe river um, because uh, it flows uh, in the neighborhood of uh, local people around and uh, there's a lot of local people who have been um, looking at this river, uh, this river for years and years. Mm -hmm. So before we started making it commercially, <clears throat> we talked to uh, some locals uh, so we could ask like, uh, where do you think it changes? Where do you think could be some troubles? And these people were really nice that it, they could tell us um, where could be uh, some issues. So um, it's a seasonal river, yes, but it's really safe. So it doesn't matter what time of the year. So one, one year down the road, how is business? Yep, it's going good. Um, I can say, um, of course, uh, right now we're in the phase that uh, we want to tell out to people that um, this river is there to enjoy. Um, either you're looking for extreme, either you're looking for family rafting to enjoy with your family. We have uh, two different sections of the river where like, both adrenaline seekers and the non-adrenaline seekers uh, can enjoy. So um, it's going good, but we're in the phase of like, bringing it out to people, show to people because people didn't know for so many years that um, it exists. Okay. So since we found out, we are um, trying hard um, to, to bring out to people. Nathalie Van de Braco of Sana Rafting highlights the distinct appeal of rafting on River Birira, complementing the awe-inspiring Nile experience. Rafting around the world takes you always to very beautiful places to experience nature from an angle that you don't see it otherwise mm -hmm. from. So you can't drive there, you can't hike there, you see it from a river, it takes you through mountains and canyons yes. often. Mm -hmm. um, and where we do it, it takes you through the jungle. And it's right in between Queen Elizabeth and Buendi National Park, so it's mm -hmm. right the route that many tourists take. Um, and the river is, well, if you compare it to Jinja only, mm -hmm. Most people in Uganda know rafting in Jinja. In Jinja, the river is very wide, yeah, sure. so you're super far from the side. And in uh, Rukunjiri, the jungle beds are tangible. Really, the, the flora and fauna, is, it's hanging over the river, and you really feel like you're in the jungle. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was Jane in the, uh, in the movie. <laughs> okay. And you constantly, you have no idea what's around the corner because the river is always turning. Are you ready? We are ready, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh, paddle, back paddle, backwards, back paddle. Okay, get down, get down, and forward, forward. Natalie advocates for diversifying Uganda's tourism offerings beyond the renowned gorilla trekking in windy, impenetrable national park, introducing adventure activities like white water rafting broadens Uganda's tourism appeal, enticing travelers seeking unique and adrenaline pumping experiences. Our section is a little bit longer. Okay, how long is it? Uh, 25 kilometers mm -hmm. and we take you on the water for three and a half hours. Wow. That is including a local surprise mm -hmm. because we like to engage the communities around the river okay. and they have some, they like things that they do, banana plantations to show, and then a small surprise that we usually don't tell the clients. <laughs> and then some local snacks and um, a lunch on the water. It's about three and a half hours, yeah. All right. I heard you mentioning about zip lining. Is that a product that you offer as well? Well, we don't offer zip lining, okay. but if you come to Rikunjiri, you can do zip lining in the neighborhood, but you can also make a couple beautiful hikes. Mm -hmm. It's a hilly area, and you can do mountain biking uh, there as well. Yeah, but we offer the water sports part. Um, at the moment, we take foreigners for $145 mm -hmm. and Ugandans for 350 k okay. per person. Okay. If that is inclusive, what, what, does, uh, what does it cover? That includes cover? all the safety gear, the transport to and from the river, from okay. Rukunjiri, where we welcome our clients, the lunch, snacks, a beer or a soda after, after um, the trip, yes. and then tra transport back, plus all the photos. <laughs> embraces adventure tourism, the introduction of white water rafting in Rukunjiri signifies a pivotal step towards offering diverse and memorable experiences to travelers, contributing to the growth and enrichment of Uganda's tourism sector. Denis Ikoa for the Business Roundup. All is well that ends well, a famous quote that mirrors the play by Shakespeare. 
It's always a good habit to not only finish, but finish well no matter the challenges. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in. Keep growing. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold and catch us on the next episode. Same time, same place. From the team, we must say goodnight. Inspiring Uganda. I'm Kaylee with the very special weather report. From up there to down here, everything is crazy. If we don't listen to scientists, things are going to be even crazier when I grow up. Let's look at the forecast for 2050. Heat waves will affect 94% of children, making playing outside a thing of the past. Extreme droughts will wipe out wheat crops, killing the one food my brother eats bread. Disasters will cost taxpayers almost $6 trillion. My parents hate taxes. Of course, all of this is caused by a blanket of heat-trapping pollution in the atmosphere that we could just, like, not put up there. But don't worry, there's still a chance of clear skies. Right now, clean energy systems are moving in from the east to the west, creating tons of coal jobs. And solar prices have dropped lower than oil and gas. Going to the satellite, it looks like a high-pressure system of grown-ups could still move in and protect kids from an avalanche of really bad stuff. Some gusty political winds ahead, but they're no match for the power of Hurricane Felicia. That's my mom. We'll keep you posted as we track if adults stop wasting time and fix this totally solvable problem. Because it's not just a weather report to us. It's our future. Dr. Deep aims to address the negative impacts of hosting refugees by improving access to basic economic and social services, enhancing good environmental management practices, and expanding income earning opportunities for refugees and host communities. We are able to receive uh, a total funding of uh, 29.2 billion, and this money we've received it to implement the sub-projects under the different components. Cohesion. The major challenge that was affecting mainly farmers was lack of access to cheap credit. The project has reached over 3.3 million beneficiaries and implemented over 6,791 sub-projects. Don't miss DRDIP General Impacts Documentary on 1st April 2024 at 7.30 p.m. on UBC TV. This weekend on UBC. Thank you.
Nenge msajiono wa masape sape tasoboka. Okubaka gato wansi, ayakabu wansi. Waguru ayakamu kubile komunga na msajia. Ate nze, ebisele ebisinga, buwampita. Ino kubeda anga zendi wakbu. Kati omuano no tatuswaziza. Ewa. Kati echifana echewe chigu wabalezi wakumamu muntebe ya we. Na ya ziza. Welcome to the enlightened, life-changing, and world-filled broadcast brought to you by Glorious Church of Christ Ministries. Where all saints are equipped for ministry through the revelation of the new life by the word. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are past. Behold, all things are new. Now, join Pastor Isaac Chitweka every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 9.30 9 a.m. As we experience and explore this new life in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This weekend on UBC. Our location this weekend is the Penthouse Inn located in Namugongo. Light, volume, glamour and enough space to live and entertain on a grand scale. And later, we sit down with the author of The Gold Mine of Potential, Michael Turiakira. Gold mine means that whatever is in that book is gold. And so what did I talk about? How do you stand out? Like if you're a youth, how do you stand out as a youth? If you're a parent, how do you stand out as a parent? If you're a student, how do you stand out as a student? weekend on UBC. The young man that is planning on getting married, you want to get married, but you do not know what marriage is about. Perhaps you did not have an opportunity to have your parents, your uncle, your father speak to you and tell you what marriage is about. So Afande Asan Kasinje is going to be guiding or mentoring the young man that is about to get married, especially those ones that are still a little bit naive as far as the marriage issues are concerned. So do you think that it is important to intentionally mentor young men? We need always to <clears throat> be shining examples to our children. Mm. The kind of son that you want to be, you have to, to be intentional about it. To have um, your son become the kind of man that you want in a home, mm. a man that fears God, a man that respects his wife, a man that respects his children, mm. a man that works so hard uh, to, to put food on the table, a man that is, um, that is responsible, honest, mm. um, that has humility, you have to demonstrate them. Yeah, because true. in the fellowship of men, um, men themselves have to, have to mentor themselves yeah, each, you, other. each other mm. and that's why we we say uh, iron sharpens iron. iron welcome to the garden of eden with your marriage anchor proceed with your love ubc inspiring uganda That the biggest component of health care is prevention. Health means avoiding sickness. Doesn't mean being sick and being treated. And all the preventive measures we have repeatedly 
outline them for you. This specialized women's and neonatal hospital is important to me because I know that uh, people need quality specialized health care. And since specialized health care is not yet available to all people, this hospital is truly the lifeline now to the majority that need it. Life starts with a healthy mother, a healthy child. The Uganda Demographic Survey of 2022 shows a reduction in Uganda's maternal mortality to 189 per 100,000 live births. To ensure a healthy and productive nation, the government of Uganda has been allocating funds to the health sector to establish facilities that offer health service up to referral level. The First Lady of Uganda, Honorable Janet Kataha Museveni, has been at the forefront to ensure the life of a mother is protected. It means life-saving for both the mothers and the neonates, especially those who are born prematurely. And uh, at Mlago right now, there are many who are there. And it's just a blessing to know that they have this facility that can take care of them. Constitutionally, the government of Uganda has an obligation to provide basic health services to its people. The parliament of Uganda saw it important that we